Dear everyone, greetings from Asian Productivity Organization. Hope everyone is staying safe and healthy during this pandemic. This is live from the APO Secretariat Office in Tokyo, Japan. And we welcome all our viewers from APO member countries and beyond. I am Asai Tambi Monikam, and thanks to our viewers for joining us on this APO Productivity Talk series. And today we will discuss about food sector innovations. First, we need to ask, if our current food production system in the agriculture is sustainable one or not. Because food security is a big concern by 2050 due to rapid increase of global population. And according to UNFAO, the food demand would increase exponentially more than 50%. The agri-food industry faces different challenges due to changing global markets, technological disruption, climate change issue, and the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. So what could be the solution to meet the increasing demand of food and ensure food security for next generation, particularly in the enterprises involved in agri-food sector? To answer these questions and discuss further in detail, dear viewers, I'm very much delighted to welcome our guest speaker, Mr. Yusuf Tokdebir, agri-food industry specialist from Turkey. How are you today, Mr. Yusuf? Thank you very much, Asai. Fine. I am fine. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, before we get into further detailed discussion on this topic, let me share a video clip from UNFAO on how innovation is important for food and agri sector. Let's have a look. Productive and efficient agri-food systems provide us with food that nourishes us and livelihoods that support our communities. Nevertheless, agri-food systems are not performing as efficiently as they should. More than three billion people around the world lack access to healthy diets. 690 million suffer from hunger, while two billion consume low quality diets, leading to micronutrient deficiencies and higher levels of obesity. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused significant disruptions to food systems, already affected by other stressors, such as transboundary pests and diseases, natural disasters, conflict, and climate change. Transformation of agri-food systems can help transition them to better deliver safe, affordable, and healthy diets to the world's rapidly growing population. At the same time, improvements must contribute to inclusive economic and social development. Innovation is a central driving force for transforming agri-food systems. Digital technologies are one example of innovation. Digital agri-food systems innovation includes online platforms, precision agriculture based on sensors, geodata and artificial intelligence, e-extension, e-commerce and digital technologies for rural finance. Additional examples are blockchain and food sensing technologies delivering transparency, traceability, food safety and quality along the food value chains. Most of these solutions are generated by the private sector. Currently, adoption of these innovative approaches by small and poor producers is still significantly hampered by the digital divide. Public investments in rural connectivity, digital literacy, farmer registration in digital database and adequate policy and incentive frameworks are needed to bridge the divide and allow for more widespread global adoption of digital agriculture transformation. But it is not only about technology. Innovation is all about solving complex problems and adding value in new ways. Farmers, herders, foresters and fisher folks are at the center of innovation. As custodians of natural resources, they have always innovated to find new solutions to complex issues. Inclusive business models such as contract farming allow producers better access to markets and a more stable income. Adoption of geographic indicators labels for food products 
generate improved market position and incomes. And recent online agriculture worker platforms help meet supply and demands during COVID-19. But all these innovations must ensure access to rural communities in developing countries, especially women and youth. Women are key players throughout all stages of agri-food systems transformation. Likewise, youth are poised to make a major contribution to this transformation by applying their education, entrepreneurial potential and technological savviness to support innovation and shepherding adoption of innovative solutions within their communities. Public-private partnerships will be crucial to help bridge investment gaps in infrastructure and access to facilitate smallholders' participation in the digital economy. Pilot public-private innovation projects targeting developing countries' farmers are promising. The Ezoko digital and e-commerce platform connects over 1 million farmers in 10 African countries to essential services, resulting in a 10 to 12% increase in revenues for those farmers. SMS services disseminating key market information to farmers in Peru helped bolster prices for their products by 13 to 14 percent. The response measures to COVID-19 can also serve as important catalysts for innovation, accelerating the transformation of food systems towards more inclusiveness and sustainability, and fostering employment opportunities and access to healthy diets for the world's most vulnerable. As you have seen in the video, innovation is the central driving force for transforming agri-food systems. Adoption of digital technologies also one of the innovation in the agri-food system, which includes online platforms, precision agriculture, based on sensor, geodata, and artificial intelligence, e-extension, e-commerce, and digital technologies for rural finance. It provides numerous opportunities along the value chains. Additional examples are like a blockchain and food sensing technologies delivering transparency, traceability, food safety, and quality along the food value chain. So in today's talk, Mr. Yusuf will explain the food sector innovations and the successful case studies from few countries. Before I invite Mr. Yusuf to start his presentation, we would like to encourage our viewers to send your questions and comments in the chat box with your name and country, and we would respond to your questions during Q&A session. Mr. Yusuf, now the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Asai, uh, for these valuable inform informations. Uh, at first, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, I am from Turkey as an agri-food industry expert. Uh, I would like to give um, uh, important information about the food, food sector innovations. Yeah. Uh, when we look at to the world at this moment, we are living in a complex uh, business conditions. Uh, the global markets are changing. We have uh, increasing global competition and technological disruption is increasing every year. Uh, we have climate and water related risks and glo global economic sho shocks. And finally, now we have coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic conditions. All are the challenges. Of course, uh, these challenges can create opportunities for the uh, world people. Yeah. And uh, if we look at the... Uh, opportunities and challenges altogether. Um, at this moment, we have the, uh, for example, digital transformation and uh, how we can use the uh, water related risks to create opportunities and how we can uh, escape from the COVID-19 uh, pandemic conditions. So we have to make some changes in the biodiversity and eco uh, ecosystem services to improve the uh, 
our agri-food uh, industry product, production and growth. Yeah. Uh, today we have to feed. Uh, uh, we have to feed uh, many people. In two, uh, 2050, our world population will be 9.7 million people, and we have massive deforestation at this moment, and climate volatility, and uh, weather conditions changing weather conditions, and water issues. We have some droughts and soil degradation, for example, soil salination. So soil quality is decreasing. Uh, high levels of greenhouse gas emissions due to the increase in agricultural uh, works. High pressure in healthcare, food and water. And global competition and changes in the trade uh, policies we have. And also there are changes technology, production, and services, and business models. And uh, there is a competition and increase in corporate investment and cybersecurity issues, high external input and resource intensive agricultural systems. All are pushing to make more innovations in agri-food industry. Of course, the solution is to make innovation management. So what we have to do, we have to identify and provide the opportunities in a clear way, in a detailed way. Effectively secure supply chains from farm to the fork. And we have to apply good manufacturing practices good hygiene practices or good laboratory practices, good agricultural practices, good integrated, uh, past integrated management system practices, and develop and implement long-term strategic innovation and marketing action plan uh, to make growth, productivity, and profitability, and market access, and achieve all these will contribute to growth, productivity, profitability, and internationalization for the food uh, uh, SMEs. Yeah. We have to remain competitive in the agri-food markets. For example, as an SME, what we have to do? We have to build our capacity and increase our experience and skills and knowledge. We have to be visible and communicate with the customers and consumers. We have to create a strong brand. So awareness of the customers and consumers should be high. And we have to create an innovation culture in our organization. And we have to have a global mindset. Of course, financial resources, financial resources are very important. So we have the ability to access or to find finance. And we have uh, to have collaborative innovation ecosystem. So this means that we have to create networks, alliances or joint ventures or cooperation with other uh, food SMEs or other companies. Uh, we have to collaborate on a global scale, not on the local scale or domestic scale. We have to cooperate with uh, other companies in the international markets, in the global markets. We have to focus on the end consumer, what they need, what they demand. So we have to know, we have to analyze all these parameters. And uh, we have to focus tailored and personalized nutrition due to uh, emerging infectious diseases. The people or persons, they prefer uh, more green, clean, ethical and safe products and personalized nutrition. So we have to consider on this. We have to uh, be careful about the product transparency. It means that product quality and safety and 
traceability from the farm to the fork. We have to ensure traceability and sustainability and ecosystem services. These are very important. We have to protect our biodiversity and ecosystem services in the land and all the aqua systems. Otherwise, we cannot increase agri our agricultural and food production levels. And we have to uh, use next generation technologies or digital technologies to increase the uh, agri-food uh, output. Of course, uh, we have to have a agri-food risk management ac uh, action plan. This is very important because I see that some uh, SMEs or companies working in agri-food industry, sometimes they have product recalls, some food safety issues in the market or in the plant. So we have to be very careful about the labeling. So we have to consider the uh, domestic standards, international standards, for example, Codex Alimentarius or national standards. Uh, so we have to apply or uh, the standards in our products very carefully because if you look at to the market so label issues undeclared allergens microbial contamination for a matter for example tampering chemical or other uh, residues or contaminants biotoxins and different uh, physical chemical and microbial uh, contaminants we can face so we have to apply uh, domestic and international standards and food law very carefully from the farm to the fork, all the along uh, supply chain. <clears throat> we have to make smart specialization and uh, to increase the agricultural uh, product uh, production and uh, internationalization. This is very important because uh, we have to have uh, research and development and innovation, and we have to uh, go to market and technology trends, and we have to check the regulations, and we have to make long-term investment plans, plans and uh, we have to increase our people knowledge and capacity and improve the facilities in technology and other opportunities. Of course, we have to reach financial sources. We have to create financial sources and uh, we have to go international markets more and more. And pro we have to make product launches. So all, we, all these activities will create competitive advantages in health, people health, human health, quality, safety, technology, sensory and structure of the uh, foods and people skills and financial resources and uh, increase uh, cooperation and the collaboration opportunities and networks. So it will improve the gender equality uh, and sustainability, environmental uh, protection and internationalization and bio-based economy we can create if we consider all these parameters. So uh, when we look at the food industry now, collaborations and cluster formations are, the number of these are increasing. For example, Food Valley from Netherlands and Enterprise Singapore, they are collaborating on uh, protein shift innovation. So this is uh, these uh, collaborations are very important in today's uh, complex business world. Okay, now uh, when we look at to the market, emerging technologies are increasing, and these technologies contribute uh, more growth and increase in the uh, agri-food uh, output. What are those? Uh, robotics, biotechnology, data measurement and data analysis, weather monitoring, for example, animal monitoring, uh, geospatial uh, monitoring, 
irrigation and fertigation uh, equipment. And uh, for example, open fields, you can make fertigation. This means that you are using water in irrigation and water and fertilizer together. And then uh, you can increase your output by using less water and uh, less fertilizers. Satellite imaginary, uh, digital infrared, heat sensors, pest management, harvesting, biometric sensor, all are now are used in agri-food industry or agriculture, especially uh, to increase the uh, agricultural or crop input uh, output or animal output. <clears throat> Today, 70% uh, of the uh, global supply is consumed in the cities or in urban regions. So we have to improve our urban uh, food systems, especially during this uh, emerging infectious disease period, COVID-19, because we see that there are some gaps, some uh, weakness or challenges we have in the urban food system. So how we can do this? We have to improve our inclusive and resilient food system. We have to focus on local agroecological production, and uh, we have to improve or increase uh, urban and peri-urban agriculture. We have to create short supply chains so we can uh, produce agri-food products close to uh, uh, urban region and sell in the uh, cities or closed cities. So efficient and safe distribution system we can create so we can uh, provide self-sufficiency in the urban region or peri-urban region so we can improve our social protection programs so that we improve biodiversity and ecosystem services in the environs and this will contribute to the gender equality and of course we have to support women's empowerment and entrepreneurship in the uh, urban and uh, peri-urban uh, environs. Okay. okay, let's look at the, what are the best practices of the sustainable agriculture. We have to we have, uh, increase agricultural productivity, enhance resilience to climate stresses, and reduce greenhouse gas emissions by applying climate-friendly and sustainable agricultural practices and technologies in the far, farm level. So what are those? Smart knowledge management, smart nutrient management, smart energy management, smart carbon management, and agroforestry, climate smart livestock, integrated pest management, smart weather forecast management systems. Today, uh, we have um, emerging diseases, uh, infectious emerging diseases. So uh, these are creating uh, health, food safety, and security. So what we have to do, what we have to focus on, these are organic farming. For example, European Union targets to make or to increase organic farming uh, or organic land 25% by uh, 2030. So we have to improve ecosystem pollinators because they affect 75% of the world's food crops. Uh, biodiversity and ecosystem services, they affect a half of global GDP, for example, 20 trillion uh, euro. Plant pesticides and fertilizers. We have to focus on these. We have to decrease the use of these. Animal antibiotics, they create drug resistance. So every year we have 700,000 700, uh, deaths per year 
according to the World Health Organization. We have to develop and launch green, clean, ethical, and safe products. Of course, we have to launch and apply digital transformation. And there are other uh, good opportunities at this moment. These e sectors are developing. These are agrigenomics, agroecology, fertigation systems, hydroponics, digital farming, and green cities. So if we focus all of, on all of these, we can improve our agri-food industry and increase food production, agri-food production, and then feed uh, 9.7 uh, billion people in 2050. When we look at to the world, there are good practices or best practices in agri-food specialization and cluster formations, clusters. These are very important. For example, the first one is the triple helix, helix approach created by the industry, academia, and government in Netherlands. So they created... Uh, they created seed valley, for example, green ports, food valley. So all are different uh, approaches in, uh, in collaboration as an agri-food uh, development hub or uh, cluster. So agri-genomics, uh, agri for example, why it is uh, helpful? because it improves food quality, increase yield, yields, decrease food waste, improve crop health, improve animal health, improve biodiversity and ecosystem services, because this is the new technology and you can analyze the uh, genomic content of the plants and animals, and then you can, uh, uh, you can uh, improve the breeding system and then you can uh, grow new crops or animals uh, resistant to droughts or frost, etc. Yeah, this is uh, this agrigenomic industry is very important. In other systems, for example, hydroponic fodder production, especially in drought countries or uh, places, this is. This system is very helpful in feeding the uh, animals, cattle or sheep or goats. So you can uh, grow, for example, barley or wheat or other crops in a closed place. And eight or nine days, you can uh, harvest and feed your animals, livestock. So it is very good technology. When we look at uh, Japan, uh, now they are trying to decrease the uh, uh, greenhouse gas level and uh, increase the uh, agri-food uh, production uh, by achievement of the decarbonization and uh, with the innovation in the agri-food industry. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Yusuf, for your wonderful and detailed presentation, uh, which was very informative as well. Um, yes, it was a um, very eye-opening session to learn the innovations and also the opportunities available for SMEs in the agri-food sector. Um, you, one of your slides you pointed out uh, that uh, we have to remain competitive in the market by adopting the innovation culture with the global mindsets, and uh, which was one of the strategies for a sustainable form also. And also you explained uh, about the creation of agri-food risk management action plan, the importance of building agri-food clusters, and development of a uh, sustainable urban food system. And also the, there were case studies which you explained from the uh, Netherlands and also the Singapore. That was very impressive. Uh, thanks again for sharing your thoughts with us. Now we open the floor uh, for questions. 
Um, uh, we have a um, uh, few questions from audience. Um, first, let me take the questions from uh, Mr. Ahmed Zalaluddin. I'm not sure from which country. Yes, yeah, so let me go through his uh, questions. Um, who should play what kind of role in managing the innovation systems? How that can be delegated? So what is your thought on that? Yeah, thank you very much uh, for this question. Uh, in innovation, the system, for example, if we are a, a company, food producing company, the leadership, the top management uh, is responsible. Uh, of course, they can create an innovation or um, uh, department or unit responsible for the research and development, marketing, innovation altogether. But uh, leadership and top management commitment and support is the most important factor uh, to uh, make innovation uh, successful. This is my answer. Thank you, Mr. Yusuf. I understand that um, uh, uh, the innovations, for example, in SME's uh, top management or the leadership uh, should delegate uh, the kind of um, environment should take place for the SMEs. Uh, yeah. Thanks for your thought process on that. And um, I have a second question from um, Rashmi Singh. Um, the question goes like that. Um, local farmers are engaged in grassroots innovations, but scaling up or outscaling looks very difficult for these innovations. So what could be the kind of strategy must be in place for easing these bottlenecks or hurdles? What the farmers or um, uh, at the grassroots level, what they face challenges. What is your answer for that? I think the best way is to make smart uh, specialization or smart farming altogether. For example, we can think a local region, uh, a town or uh, province, for example, what type of uh, crops or plants or animals we can grow there, for example. If we make a, uh, this uh, production uh, of the uh, crops, for example, one type or two types uh, crops, if we collaborate all these uh, farmers together, they can create financial opportunity, visibility and awareness in the domestic and international markets. Alone, it is not easy, but they have to create uh, small hubs and uh, specialize it uh, for one crop or two crops or one uh, agri-food system so that uh, they can collaborate with the universities, government, and also international markets. Uh, I think collaboration is the most important parameter. Uh, alone, as a farmer individually, it is not easy, I understand well. So they have to create small hubs so uh, regional or local development opportunity it will create we, and they have to increase their um, visibility they have to improve all the supply chain and they have to all the nation from which country for example if they want to export their products they have to know custom systems and uh, regulations and uh, labeling and uh, so food safety risks etc they have to consider all these and improve in their uh, system uh, from the farm to the uh, processing line uh, and then uh, making shipment uh, to the other countries. So they have to improve their capability, uh, skills and experience. And then step by step, they can be internationals. But they have to make cooperate and smart specialize it. I think that this is my um, answer. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that um, insights. Yeah. Uh, on that question. Um, yes, uh, my the next question goes like this. So you explained in your presentation, like the, there are different parameters um, uh, actually driving for the uh, SMEs or the food industries. Out of that, uh, which you would consider as the most important success drivers for food manufacturing industries or SMEs? Yeah. 
uh, as I this question is very important. The most important parameters or K success drivers, I think that increasing the uh, experience and uh, skills. I think it, it, it for, uh, start here and then controlling or analyzing uh, all the supply chain along uh, all the supply chain for the quality and safety parameters and benchmarking for example if you are producing a product and if you want to uh, enter to the different markets you have to check your competitors in quality technology their targets short medium and long term targets and you have to improve your technology you have to consider uh, competitor companies and also accordingly you have to improve your technology and uh, management systems uh, and financial resources so you have to find what you can do you can collaborate with different companies uh, in domestic level and international level and of course in today's iot or internet age we have to improve our uh, visibility uh, and communication uh, channels. We have to improve our innovative knowledge and create uh, innovative culture in the organization. And we have to focus uh, or create a long-term marketing and innovation action plan and regularly revise this. I think these are, uh, these are the uh, most important success factors. Thank you, Mr. Yusuf. Um, very well noted on the, your point that the innovation, um, we need to give a more weightage for the innovation culture in any kind of a startup or SMEs. So that's going to be a long-term sustainable solution for that uh, sector. Uh, well noted on that point. And uh, from one of your answers for our viewers' questions that you have mentioned that a smart specialization. So um, uh, could you please give more uh, elaborative answers? So what, what is exactly smart specialization? How they can enhance agri-food uh, industry development, uh, say in a particular region, say if it is uh, kind of uh, like um, um, Asia or within Asia, if you take a, like a least developed countries or um, medium level uh, developing countries, something like that. If you categorize particular countries, how you would, um, kind of give uh, your thoughts on this point, smart specialization. Yeah, uh, smart specialization. For example, in Turkey, northeast of uh, Turkey, uh, we are producing tea. So in 1930s, 1940s, the, the government uh, made some trial productions and finally uh, all this region now uh, for uh, different provinces, they are producing tea. So, uh, and the, this tea production is sufficient Turkish market and uh, some of them uh, uh, are exported to other countries. So this is a uh, smart speci specialization because farmers and government and universities all together cooperated. They created a new industry. For example, uh, we can do in a small scale in a region. For example, uh, if there is a good production of nut or good production of grape or something, fig, uh, or apricot, for example, uh, farmers, they have to collaborate together. They have to create a financial source from government, universities, or external sources. And then, uh, as a collaborative manner, they can uh, increase their production and uh, simplify the market access in domestic or international markets. For example, in Turkey, we have an apricot region. Malatya is the best. And Malatya is the uh, most producing uh, province in Turkey. And Turkey uh, is exporting more than 300 uh, million US dollar dry apricots per year. So 90% of this production is produced in Malatya region. There are uh, uh, food SMEs producing or processing and harvesting. So technology 
and production, good farming practices, organic and conventional altogether, they created an agri-food system. This is smart specialization, I think. So countries, they can do this, or some regions, they can do this and uh, grow in domestic market and then go to the international market. I think it, it is very good system. Uh, thank you, Mr. Yusuf. I think uh, you are really enlightened that point, a smart specialization. Um, uh, well, well, uh, well received on that point. Um, my next question goes um, uh, uh, about the very uh, natural phenomenon which happens in many countries. Um, uh, I would say like a food recalls in the market. So it is happening in different, different countries for various reasons. But uh, could you, from your experience, so what do you think the basic reasons why those food recalls is happening in the market? Yeah, the reason is um, this is related with the, um, your analyzing capability or testing capability and uh, detecting the, what are the risks. So uh, at first, in a food manufacturing facility, most important thing, uh, risk parameters we have to identify all these risk parameters very well uh, so we have to check the uh, local or national standards food regulations international regulations and now for example we have uh, rapid alert systems in different uh, in some countries and also european union so each country is applying such systems so what are the issues in the market and we have to know and what type of contaminants or residues we can face in our product uh, uh, in the uh, from the farm to the fort we have to uh, research on this very well and then train all the people and uh, making regular analysis if you if you if we have a risk parameters for example uh, for example wheat flour we are purchasing and in wheat, what type of uh, contaminants or issues we can face? We have to know this. It may be, for example, ochratoxin A. If we are purchasing, for example, rice in a, a region close to the uh, lead uh, mining, etc. So we have to check the lead. Is there any? Uh, is there or no? For example, apple. If we are producing apple. If we are using uh, apple juice or uh, apple puree, for example, we have to check patulin. Patulin is a mycotoxin, so we should know this. And uh, these are very uh, these are very good uh, parameters. And people working many years in factories, they know these failures. But if we remove these people and then hire new people, and uh, if we don't uh, train uh, these people and develop their skills, they may fail because they don't know history in the factory or uh, production facility. So people experience and skills are very, very important and regularly control in the manufacturing facility. So this means that from the, the farm to the consumer, we have to analyze, we have to identify all the risk parameters very well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yusuf. I think uh, you have explained it very, very in detail, right from the farm to the like farm to fork, how we have to be very, very careful in each and every parameter so that we could avoid the risk for this yeah. kind of uh, food recalls. Um, yes, thank you. Thanks for that explanation. Now, my next question goes on the SMEs. Uh, for example, there are so many, again, um, uh, during this pandemic, many SMEs, they got uh, uh, affected. The pandemic impact was huge. But still, and um, uh, from our for your experience, if you'd like to add kind of uh, suggestions, so how these SMEs can rebound or regrow to achieve their growth profitability and also going for uh, internationalizations so what is your um, like uh, thoughts or uh, suggestions for especially smes uh, which they are really battling to grow uh, yeah very good question uh, uh, food smes i think that at first they have to they have to create a diversified portfolio 
but the number of these uh, the number of the products in this portfolio they have to check that which products several products for example one two three which ones are demanded more from the market at first they have to focus this but some companies they develop and launch uh, 100 200 or 300 for example or 50 different uh, products and they, they try which one is good and this means that their inventory cost and production cost is very high so they have to decrease this or uh, reduce the uh, inventory cost production cost so uh, some several products they have to focus and they have to uh, increase the visibility uh, and awareness of the, uh, uh, these products and uh, consumers together and focus on this. And uh, step by step, they have to go international markets. So uh, only several products, one or two products, international markets, they have to focus at first one country. Which country most demand uh, for these food products? So they have to learn, they have to adapt this, uh, their company to external market and uh, take uh, necessary measures to apply the food law standards, etc., and label changes they have to make and custom uh, works and export management. So what are the issues? What type of uh, failures we can face? They have to identify, they have to analyze. And they have to analyze also competitors in that market. They have to be very careful. But if they analyze uh, all the parameters and uh, create a risk management action plan and also uh, export management action plan or marketing plan. So I think that uh, they can make successful market uh, access and grow in the international markets. This is not easy, but I think uh, they can do. So more visibility, more communication and more alliances or networking or collaborations, joint ventures, they have to create in the international market. So in today's complex uh, uh, business conditions, more networking and collaboration in the international level, I think it is the best thing. Um, thank you, this Mr. Yusuf. Yeah. Uh, sorry for the technical um, glitch, what we are facing now. Uh, yes, um, the, we have a question from audience. Um, uh, yes, uh, uh, the person name is not mentioned. The number is, is identified as a 1, 2, 12. Uh, do you have the roadmap for food sector innovation? I think it's a very broad uh, question. So you know, what is your thoughts on that? Yeah. Mr. Yusuf. This roadmap uh, starts from the farm and go to the consumer. So this means that along this value chain, we have to identify all the risks, analyze, and take measures. And uh, we have to create an organization in the uh, or uh, small organization in the uh, uh, food company and to focus on these uh, processes, process parameters and success drivers, uh, key performance indicators. And then I think that uh, we can uh, create an action plan, action roadmap. So, uh, and we can successfully deliver the results. So this is a general question, of course, but uh, so we need to create an action plan from the farm to the fork. I think it is the best way and a special unit in the organization from marketing, from production, from supply chain and uh, research and development all together a specific team, innovation team, I think they can handle, they can uh, deliver uh, outputs, targeted outputs. Thank you. Thanks for that, um, uh, your um, 
nice comment and i have another questions uh, again this is a, again the general questions um regarding again with the agri food sector and uh, the, from your expertise or experience so what do you think about the competitive intelligence or the competitive advantages for the agri food industry yeah yeah competitive in today in, today we have to make market research market research not only about the products so competitive intelligence normally is searching for the more information about the competitors how they are working technology human skills their experience marketing plan their marketing plan their innovation plan how they are working from the farm for example to the uh, for You have to understand, for example, their long-term targets in after three years later, five years later. And also, for example, uh, if you want to enter an uh, international market, who will come? Which company can come there? For example, you have to know. Or which, what type of new technologies they can create? So uh, these... So if we analyze all these, we can create competitive advantages. But sometimes these competitive ad advantages can be transient competitive advantages. Now, look at the mobile phones, for example. Six months, one year, or two years later, some companies are lost, are, uh, have, uh, they fail. But in agri-food industry, this is long-term, we can create competitive advantages, good products today. But two years later, a new competitor can come, can create more competitive advantages and uh, increase sales, for example, from 10% uh, to 90%, for example. So this means that you have to intelligence and create or uh, develop and launch long-term marketing and innovation action plan and regularly revise this otherwise we can lose or we can fail this is my answer yeah uh, thank you very much mr yusuf uh, for your valuable insights and uh, yes that was my last question to you and i hope all um, our viewers um, found your information and uh, insightful um, uh, very useful for them in their uh, like a sector wherever they work or they do the business and um, dear viewers um, and um, in the interest of time and also what we we face a little bit a technical glitch here so um, we would like to um, ask you to post your questions um, in the comment section and we will respond those questions after we discuss with mr yusuf and um, sorry for the inconvenience caused due to the technical glitch and uh, thank you very much and uh, thanks a lot for joining this session and uh, yes the epo productivity talk will be held every week featuring the leading experts in different fields so please subscribe this epo channel and stay tuned thanks a lot goodbye thank you.